Okay, test one, two. Hello, CRIM1 students. I'm Dr. Emma Hughes, and I am really excited to introduce you to Sheila Gallagher-Price, who is the College of Social Sciences liaison for the Career Development Center. And Sheila just has a wealth of knowledge and experience and expertise that she can share with you as you think about preparing for future careers. And today she's going to be talking to you about building career readiness skills. So Sheila, thank you for joining our class. Thank you, Dr. Hughes. I am going to be sharing my screen and we're going to be, I have a PowerPoint that I'm gonna be showing you all today on what are career readiness skills and the competencies associated with them. So, Career readiness skills is a term you're going to hear more often as you get closer to graduation. Career readiness skills are is a foundation from which to demonstrate requisite core competencies that broadly prepare college educated for success in the workplace and lifelong career management. And simply put, career readiness skills are skills that you can take with you into any job that you perform in. There are eight career readiness skills. And by the way, let me mention that career readiness skills can often be called portable skills, transferable skills, um, people skills or human skills, skills like I mentioned earlier that you can take with you into any job or any profession. And there are eight top skills that are career readiness skills that employers look for in almost every job that you're going to apply for. Um, we subscribe to the National Association of Colleges and Employers. It's a national organization where they vetted employers across the nation and ask them what skills they looked for, what were their top skills they looked for when they're going and hiring somebody for their organization or company. And the top eight skills are listed here, career and self-development, communication, you're gonna see, on, I guarantee you, on every job description, both oral and written, critical thinking, or problem solving, you'll see a variation of either one, equity and inclusion, leadership, professionalism, or work ethic, either way, interchangeable. Teamwork is also interchangeable with collaboration, and then of course, technology. These are the top eight skills that they look for. And what I'm going to do today is let me get on the presentation screen. There we go. The definition for each of the career readiness competencies that employers are looking for are listed here. I think it's important that you look at these definitions and really understand what it is that they are describing when talking about these top eight competencies. They're going to be skills that you utilize probably every day in your um, job or in a classroom environment or your volunteer work or your clubs and organizations that you don't realize you're utilizing. It's a day-to-day, -day, everyday thing like communication. You're gonna see works or communicates effectively with others, both oral and written. You're gonna see it like that on a job description. So what I always recommend to students when I meet with you to discuss your resume is I always say, start off with the job description and highlight these key things that the employer is looking for and find a way to build those key uh, skills that they're looking for into your resume in your experiences section. It's important that you look at that job description and highlight those key skills because you want to demonstrate to that employer that you have them or that you've acquired them in your past experiences. 
So just to check, so you think students should be thinking right away about what they're already doing that matches those various categories, and if there are areas that they feel that they have less experience thinking about what they could do to supplement it. Absolutely. And I always tell students, Dr. Hughes, think about everything you did in that past employment. Write it all out looking at these skills and remembering back what it is you did. If you had to deal with the customers, you probably had to orally communicate effectively with them to get their order right or to provide excellent customer service, or you were a, a shift crew lead, which demonstrates leadership skills. So what I'm gonna do today is go through each of the eight competencies and give you sample behaviors that demonstrates something probably that you did and didn't realize you were doing in your prior experiences. Sure. For example, career and self-development. Now, what does that mean? It's developing oneself and one's career through continual personal and professional learning. You're doing that as you seek your undergraduate degree. It's a personal career or a personal goal of yours to obtain after that professional career that you're wanting to pursue. So you're going to demonstrate that as a strength, right? That's something that you've set a goal for yourself and you're seeking actively. And the next step is going to be seeking out that professional employment after you've obtained that degree. So what that behavior demonstrates is it shows awareness of your own strengths in the areas for development. It identifies areas for continual growth, and you want to demonstrate that to the employer. You're always eager to learn, and you're always eager to set goals for yourself and try to achieve those goals, right? What you're trying to do is better yourself, and it shows to the employer that you are more willing to try new things, right, and to seek those new experiences because it makes you for a well-rounded individual plus it offers something to the employer as well the next skill and you will see this 90 percent of the time on a job description is communication 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 it's being able to clearly and effectively exchange information with the customer or your teammate at work co-worker or your classmate in a class project or presentation that you have to do together as a group. It allows you to exchange information, ideas, facts, and perspectives with persons inside and outside the organization, right? And so example of this behavior would be understand the importance of and demonstrate verbal, written, and nonverbal body language and abilities. So you're reading that customer. You're going to know if that customer is upset just by the behavior that they're displaying. So what you're looking to do is communicate effectively with them in a calm manner. Try to understand what their issue or problem is. And then you're going to, by demonstrating active listening and persuasion, and then you're going to communicate back clearly to them what it is their issue is and how you can resolve that issue with them. And that's an excellent example of communication skills. So you're gonna be doing this every day in your day-to-day -day life and you do it every day and probably don't even realize you're utilizing that skill. But I'm pointing these eight top skills because employers are always looking for a student or a former student that can communicate effectively both oral and written. And so I think the key thing is just saying, people are doing these skills all the time. We might just not think about it as something that we could present on a, on a resume. And I think it's exactly, Dr. Hughes, and I think it's important that you do indicate this in your resume because it is something not only that they're looking for, but even if they're not looking for it, it's a great way to say, I have this skill, you may not be looking for it, but it's important for me to perform my um, job that you will be hiring me to do. Critical thinking. This is so important when working in the professional field. They want students or former students 
that can problem solve on their own. So it's being able to identify and respond to the needs based on understanding or situational context and logical analysis of relevant uh, information. I think it's important for you to understand critical thinking or problem solving is anticipating an issue and resolving it on your own, clearly put. They wanna know that you're able to resolve issues without having to go to someone else and say, you know, I can't find this information. Can you tell me where to find it? My response back as the employer is, what resources did you utilize to seek out that answer? I do that currently. I oversee the student assistants in my office. And that's the question I'll go back to them. Tell me what resources you used. And then we're going to go from there and maybe introduce new resources that they didn't think of or didn't know existed. An employer is going to be very impressed when they know that you've utilized critical thinking or problem skills to resolve whatever issues you've encountered in your previous experiences, right? So it's That's what we're encouraging in the classroom and in writing papers, doing research, going to the library, searching databases, your problem solving and your figuring out how to find an answer to a question. Absolutely. You're doing it in your day-to-day -day, uh, undergrad education and probably don't even realize you're utilizing that skill. But I think it's important to parlay that on the resume so that the employer has a clear visual picture of when you utilize that skill. Equity inclusion. This is very important today, especially on the Fresno State campus. I don't know if you're aware but we have one of the most diverse student populations in the nation here at Fresno State. So you are interacting and engaging every day with an ethnically multicultural group of co students every day in the classroom or in your clubs or organizations or through your friends. So what it does is it demonstrates the awareness and attitude, knowledge and skills required to be equitably engaged and include people from all walks of life and all cultures. It's engaging in anti-racist practices that actively challenge the system structures and policies of racism. Such an important skill today in this environment that you can demonstrate that you actively contribute to inclusive and equitable practices with your co-students in a classroom setting, in your clubs or organizations, and especially in um, any of your research or projects you have to do every day in the classroom. And of course, Fresno State hosts numerous events that focus on issues of equity and diversity and inclusion that students can get involved with as well. Absolutely. And one of the sample behaviors is keeping an open mind to diverse ideas and new ways of thinking. That's an excellent example to demonstrate equity and inclusion. You are doing that every day, probably in your work employment, when you're dealing with customers from all walks of life. So indicate that on your resume and indicate that in your experiences section. It's important that you let the employer know that you do have this skill and ability and you can demonstrate clearly on the resume when you've utilized it. Leadership, recognize and capitalize on personal and team strengths to achieve organizational goals. Think about a classroom setting and a project that you were a part of. Did you take the lead in that project or research? If you did, you want to show that as an example on your resume. Did you hold an office in your club or organization while going to school? Important to demonstrate that as well on the resume. It's important that you demonstrate to the employer that you have these skills and when you've utilized them. So you're gonna indicate that on your resume, either in your clubs or organizations or in your experiences section either in the classroom or work, volunteer, any of those areas where you took the lead on a project or oversaw a group of coworkers at work 
or even took the lead in your club or organization. Professionalism. It is often mentioned interchangeably with work ethic. Employers today are looking for students that display professionalism in the workplace. And it's more than, in my opinion, showing up on time every day. That is important. It's being present, prepared, but it also demonstrates effective work habits, right? It's an example of you and how you will perform with that club, I mean, with that corporation when you go to apply. So you want to indicate professionalism and strong work ethic habits on the resume. It can be demonstrated by being present, prepared every day. It could be maintain a positive personal brand in alignment with the organization and personal career goals. It would be acts equitably and with integrity and accountability to self, others, and the organization. You set the example by how you conduct yourself in, in any and all walks of life, right? So you want to demonstrate that on the resume. And then, of course, work experience and internship experience, volunteer experience, all that could be really used to demonstrate this. Absolutely. I'm going to move this taskbar because it's hiding some of my, let's see, it's not working. Oh, there it goes. Okay, teamwork, huge to an employer that you work well with others. It's, they want to know how you're going to fit in with their organization. They want to know that in a group setting, can you work collaboratively with others or will you be disruptive to the team environment that they've created? This will not only come out in the resume, but it's more importantly going to come out in the interview, right? They're going to ask you to give an example of a time when you had to deal with a difficult maybe coworker or a customer. They want to know that you can work in a team environment to achieve whatever goals or whatever outcomes they're looking for in the job that you're going to be performing. And they want you to build strong, positive working relationships because then when everybody works cohesively, then you can achieve the goals that that um, uh, company has set for you. And it's important that you demonstrate this in the resume when you've worked in a group setting or environment like in the classroom on a project, a research project that you have to present. And sometimes, even in my personal experience, when I attended uh, college, there are going to be those maybe in your team that don't pull their weight. That's going to be an example that you're going to want to demonstrate in an interview. How did you overcome that? What did you do to manage that conflict or interact respectively with them, but yet let them know that they haven't pulled their weight on that project? You're dealing with that every single day, either in the classroom or you're going to face it in your professional career. And it's how you react to it that the organization is looking for because they want to make sure, again, that they have a strong, cohesive team and that you can obtain the goals that they've placed before you, right? Anything you want to add to that, Dr. Hughes? No, I'm just thinking um, that's partly why in a lot of classes there are group projects is so that you have that experience of working together with others. It's so true. And it gives you exposure to what to do, right? When there's that teammate that maybe isn't playing nicely in the group or maybe isn't pulling their weight. It's how you react to that that sets how you would handle it in for an organization or a company. Technology, 
you do this every day or utilize technology and just take it for granted. I see students over and over again on their resume forget to mention that they use either Excel spreadsheets or they use Microsoft Office Suite or any of the technology programs at your work. It's important that you demonstrate on your resume all the technology um, programs that you had to utilize to perform your job. It lets the employer know that you have that adaptability to learn a new program and to use it for whatever it is they're needing for that position or job. So pay attention to the job description and see what programs they mention. I know that Fresno State often mentions PeopleSoft. So when you log into your My Fresno State portal, you're actually utilizing PeopleSoft programming to log into My Fresno State portal. So think about the programs you're utilizing and maybe mention those in your ex work experience section or in your skills and qualifications section on your resume. Now that's the end of our career readiness skills, but I do want to show you some resources that you're gonna find. Let's see if I can get out of this. Click to exit, it's not letting me exit, there we go. On our website, and I'm gonna share my screen again. About halfway down the page, you're going to see this career success guide. In this career success guide are the eight top skills that I mentioned in this PowerPoint presentation that employers are looking for with the definition to help you when you're describing your experiences on your, in your resume. We have the definitions here. And I will also provide to Dr. Hughes the sample behaviors described with each of these competencies that I mentioned in the PowerPoint. You can have this, you can download this career ready or career success guide either as a PDF on our website or right up here in the upper left corner. We also have a lot of other inf helpful information in this career success guide. But I wanted to also show you, these are the top skills employers are looking for today by order of importance. And you'll notice that almost all of these attributes or skills that they're looking for are those eight career readiness competencies that we just discussed in that PowerPoint. So think about this list of attributes that employers are looking for and think about situations or examples that you have demonstrated these attributes, either utilized them or acquired them. And when you are doing your resume and putting your resume together, think about building these into that experiences section whenever possible, knowing that these are the skills that employers are looking for. And you, Interesting to see that ability to work in a team came out top. And I guess thinking about these things is also very helpful in preparing for an interview because you might be asked a question related to your experience in one of these areas. So true, Dr. Hughes, I guarantee you, as sure as we're talking today, that you will be asked a behavioral-based interview question such as, describe a time where you had to deal with a difficult coworker. What they're looking for is how did you handle it? How did you overcome it? What was the situation, right? And what was the outcome? They want to know utilizing your problem solving skills or your ability to work collaboratively in a team environment. How did you resolve that difficult coworker? That demonstrates to that company or that employer that you have the skill set necessary to overcome these obstacles that you're going to face almost daily in all aspects of your life. And can you move beyond it 
and work cohesively in a team environment for that organization or company. So think about these attributes, and I will also send these uh, to Dr. Hughes so that when you are putting your resume together, you're thinking about the skill set and you're incorporating them in. Well, thank you so much for this information. As always, you're just a, an amazing resource for our students and, and have so much valuable information. So I appreciate you taking the time to to convey all of this to the class. Absolutely, and my pleasure. And also, I want to put my email. I'm not sure that they'll be able to see it, but you can reach out to me if you have any question, any of the students, if you have questions regarding how to build your career readiness skills into your resume. By reaching out to me, I am always available. My email is Sheila G, S-H-E-I-L-A-G, at csufresno.edu, please feel free to reach out to me anytime. Again, thank you so much for your time. My pleasure.